We're going to talk about Hurricane Helene, okay? But I will say one thing, okay? I find it rather odd. I don't know if I'm like alone in this. I've been talking to some normies about this too. There isn't like enough coverage on this. I do feel as though like the media hasn't even like talked about the devastation as much, which is crazy. Like hundreds of people are dying. Entire towns are underwater. I feel like this would be leading, you know what I mean? Non stop yes north carolina was hit with flooding it hasn't seen in a century some calling it biblical this is the scene in Asheville, which is now isolated after roads leading into the town flooded and cell towers were knocked down in the storm so this is what we know right now at least 91 people are dead and that number is expected to rise and power is out to some 2.1 million customers across that region we have team coverage of the this is some biblical bro which is crazy because people don't seem to recognize that like the once in every hundred years type keeps happening every year like what happened i thought this was like a once in a lifetime circumstance you know like this used to happen once every 50 years max okay maybe every hundred years now it's every year brother do we just kind of cast this aside is what do we do do we just kind of act like it's uh normal now this is a this is the thing i don't really know how to parse through this information i find it rather odd that like the devastation is so massive the devastation is so god massive and the coverage of it is like not up to par but i don't really know how to match the coverage in general like it's it's never it's never the best kind of analysis to be like oh the media is not paying enough attention to this thing because like they obviously are covering it but it does kind of shock me how limited the information is like i've only seen like i've only seen like tiktoks here and there twitter links here and there not a lot of articles like if you go to google news like here let's look like there is some hurricane helene stuff but even this morning it was mostly like uh israel morning joe tears into trump over calling harris uh stupid but this is my own personal briefing maybe that's the reason but i do feel as though like the coverage does not match the devastation you know what i mean it almost feels as normalized as like mass shootings in to a certain degree the thing i mean about this is that i'm not saying the media is not covering it at all of course it is but this kind of sh would be week-long if not month-long news coverage like a lot of you are younger so you probably don't recall katrina this is like a yearly event now it almost feels like we are living in a post katrina world where katrina is a yearly event and the scale of the devastation is katrina across multiple territories and it's like not as big it doesn't feel like it's as big as a story like you had bro you had kanye west on the phone trying to do fundraisers on television when that was happening that's why he had that famous moment where he was like george w bush doesn't care about black people like that's that's from that that's how big of a thing that was and i do think now i do think now it's like it's almost like sandy hook normalized mass shootings and now in that same degree it all like it, it just you know it, it holds the attention of people for like maybe a day maybe two days and then we just move on i don't know if it's like also because like our attention span is limited i don't know if it's because we you know i've just been thinking about it a lot i don't know if it's because of our attention spans that are limited now as a consequence of like TikTok or whatever but it is kind of weird and i don't know if it's because like i'm not saying that this is like a deliberate effort to like normalize it's like hyper normalization of these kinds of like climate atrocities i don't think that but it is strange it is strange to me that it's like i mean it isn't as bad as katrina that was half of louisiana's coastline that was destroyed bro there's Asheville is gone brother Asheville North Carolina is gone the dam broke it's over you know it's just like fully underwater at this point it's crazy it I think it is definitely Katrina level yeah regarding coverage bridges are rendering entire regions virtually entirely inaccessible by land there's no power there's no internet I'm sure information will be scarce coming out of it from the ground versus being able to get aerial shots like we have this is like apocalyptic levels of destruction as a chatter put it and I I don't know man <laughs> it's just it's 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 really up it is really 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 fucked up one aspect of this story that's really fucked up is that like we are directly causing it with anthropogenic climate change okay as the world heats up more and more i guess in the simplest terms directly as a consequence of our emissions things that scientists keep saying are going to happen are happening over and over again and a big chunk of people a big chunk of people are just like nah i'm different dog we're different it's fine the only Cli like the most significant most consequential climate change policy that we have 
seems to be the border policy like a a, a more military uh, a, a more militant border a more white nativist more militant border policy is like the only thing that we are setting up for like we're not hardening our infrastructure even enough and half of the entire political field basically denies it's even happening and is like trying to legislate away the mention of it like you look at florida it's like they're too busy being like nah climate change is fake like don't say it don't say it's real please and it blows my mind uh fango lives our ev uh, correspondent says easy way to explain climate change makes storms stronger global warming makes water warmer warmer water has more energy so storms passing over that water gain more energy from the warmer water which means there's stronger storms we've added several billion nuclear bombs worth of energy to the ocean in a couple decades yes that is a good way to explain it thank you yeah that's also partially due to climate change migration no i know i know that's why i'm saying like our border security measures is a climate change infrastructure hardening initiative it's because there are going to be more and more people that previously worked in like the agricultural sector that are not going to be able to work so they're going to migrate as their economic uh, their economy is devastated they're going to migrate north they're going to come to america because there is ecological disaster there and they don't have any they don't have any money to even harden their infrastructure nor overcome the the damage that climate change is is causing in those regions but what is crazy about this what is crazy about this beyond that beyond the the uh migration patterns right we literally have basically at this point you know developing nation levels of of infrastructure in the wealthiest nation on the planet dude like it's wild to me that we just straight up have a situation where half of the political population half the half of our government is like it doesn't exist so don't do anything about it the other half is like it does exist but we are going to be susceptible to political pressure from the right and from moneyed interest like in the oil and gas sector so we're gonna keep drilling baby we're gonna keep fracking drill baby drill but like you know gay version and we're we hear you we see you we want to trust the science but also we're not going to trust the science that much because as long as it harms the bottom line of like oil and gas giants then we're gonna not trust the science that much right how are immigration and disasters of hurricanes correlated no, um, you're looking at one aspect of of uh, how climate change and the once in a lifetime like weather events, like climate change uh, created uh, catastrophes occur in America. But you're failing to consider that when this happens in like Mexico, it's even more devastating. But beyond that, climate change also causes drought in a lot of places, especially in Latin America. Not only do they not have enough money to harden their infrastructure against this sort of thing when this kind of devastation occurs and it completely collapses entire ecologies, but beyond that, you have climate refugees. You have people that can no longer work the land because the land is no longer tenable. But what do they do? They migrate, they migrate further north. So you have climate refugees. You have climate refugees that are like are, are coming to America because like at least there's still land that you can work on and make money on. So that's how millions of people are displaced. And America knows that like it's gonna happen more and more. It's kind of like it's kind of like the classic Chevron, Exxon Mobil having full knowledge of uh, the the carbon emissions causing anthropogenic climate change and global warming in general, and like refusing to do anything about it. And as a matter of fact, having that full knowledge and then only using that knowledge to create PR structures against it so that you can create an environment where like 30 to 40% of the entire fucking nation doesn't even believe it's real, right? That's what they did since the 80s. They were like, oh, shit, this is going to be a problem in the future. So let's make sure that it doesn't become a problem for us and our bottom line by creating an entire system in media to just lie to the American public and to say that it's a bullshit and that is one of the fucking negative consequences of this reality because you're seeing biblical levels of destruction you're watching biblical levels of destruction and what are some americans saying about it how are some people reckoning with this reality how are some people dealing with this reality they're dealing with it by blaming weather machines or something and it's no different than mass shootings here's why it's no different than mass shootings mass shootings are not a natural disaster but we analyze it like it's a natural disaster why because we are completely captive to corporate interests in that regard gun manufacturers make too much money for us to ever actually deal with the gun violence that happens in this country. So if you are refusing to reckon with the reality in front of you, you are gonna look for alternative realities as to why things are happening.
And that's why there are so many conspiratorial psychopaths out there. Okay, that's my point. My point is, my point is, there are so many conspiracy brained losers out there because they've been duped into refusing to acknowledge what the truth is we're so far removed from that and it's the same principle behind gun violence as well which we also analyze like it's a naturally occurring phenomenon we're like oh do not look to the actual problem which is guns okay mass arsenal of weapons that are readily available to the public more guns than there are people but god forbid you analyze it with the actual root cause of the problem no we got to desperately cling on to anything and else anything and everything we can oh it's got to be door control we got to give more guns to the teachers we got to do this we got to do that and that's why so many people at this point now that they've exhausted all other options whenever fucking mass shootings occur they now go oh it's because the shooter is trans i've imagined that the shooter is trans and trans people are doing these mass shootings or um you know this is a psyop this is a government psyop they actually are doing this because they want to do gun control which never happens by the way worse psyop of all time so that's it that's why people hyper focus on like insane sh this happened in hawaii too oh it must be like space lasers that did the f uh fires it cannot be that the the brush is just simply drier than it has ever been it cannot be like full-blown ecological collapse that caused massive wildfires it's got to be space lasers look at the blue cars the blue cars didn't light on fire like we are purposely making our population dumber and dumber and dumber because it's like easier to control and manipulate in some ways but also simultaneously this is not tenable this is not sustainable okay i don't know how else to describe it it's so fucked up in every way in every way shape and form like the way we analyze the situation is so messed up here this is a matt chrisman quote that it talks about it okay these guys that marched in charlottesville these are the people who are aware of the unspoken premise of the sort of zombie be neoliberalism that we're living in which is that we're coming to a point where there's going to be ecological catastrophe and that it's going to require either massive redistribution of the ill-gotten gains of the first world or genocide and these are the first people who have basically said well if that's the choice then i choose genocide and they're getting everyone else ready intellectually and emotionally for why that's going to be okay when it happens why they are not really people when we're putting all this money into more walls and drones and bombs and guns to keep them away so that we can watch them die with clear consciences it's because we have been loaded with the ideology that these guys are now starting to express publicly on the other side of them we have people who are in who are saying in full voice no we have the resource to save everybody to give everybody a decent and worthwhile existence and that is what we want and that is the real difference between these two and you can tell that to the next who tells you that they're actually two sides of the same coin we are the people who say we have the money we have the capacity we have a surplus of food we are the people who can save everybody else we just choose not to and the problem with neoliberalism and the problem with like the democratic party's capitulation to right-wing framing on issues is that they are also slaves of the same master the master of capital they are still deeply uh they have a deeply vested interest in maintaining this corporate oligopoly this corporate oligarchy so they have to make some messages like messaging uh, uh differences between the republican party but ultimately that's why every four years you see them bouldering towards more and more right-wing framing on these issues and that is how we arrive at the viral tweet blaming the flooding in north carolina on government weather manipulation because you are desperately avoiding the truth you don't want to see the truth you don't want to see the truth of the matter you don't want to listen to scientists you think scientists are gay and lame and lying to you and when that happens of course you're going to find yourself in the throes of like insanity like this I saw this as well. FEMA said last week it faces nearly $9 billion of shortfall for Hurricane Helene recovery efforts on the same day Israel announced an $8.7 billion weapons package from the U.S. Our tax dollars are funding Israeli war crimes instead of the investments we desperately need here. Can't do it. Can't get Congress to do it. You just can't do it, you know? Meanwhile, here's another f*** you to the police, by the way, because every single thing I talk about, the intersectionality of that violence is in full display right here. The intersectionality of misinformation, the intersectionality of that violence, all of the systems that we exist under that are openly being like, f*** you, die, you f poor police guarding grocery stores while folks are denied the opportunity to purchase baby formula after losing everything is pretty indicative of where we are as a country okay not letting people into the grocery store that's what they're that's what they're using their uh funds on great stuff man that's what we're using our local funds on <laughs> so why didn't you stock up why didn't anyone stock up the store has to follow procedure from the people like you from buying everything up and then suing the store because they bought bad product like there are people immediately being like nah matt wallace don't worry, guys. Weather modification isn't real. It's just a coincidence that Hurricane Helene 
is one of the most devastating inland damage storms in history in the hundreds of pro-Trump counties in mass are massively being impacted during those most important elections of our lifetimes. Yeah, obviously the elites would never be evil enough to create hurricanes designed to interfere with democracy. Pay no attention to the storms. 30,000 likes. We're done. We're done. We're done. You cannot come back from this, I think. How the f*** are you living in a god mountain and expected for your entire f house to, to flood? Entire town to flood. It is perfectly understandable. Here's a here's reporting from Asheville, North Carolina from April 2002 or 2022. Okay, let's take a look about how Asheville was presented as a escape from severe climate change impact. When it comes to climate, the mountains have always been an attractive place to live and now even more so with climate change making severe weather events even worse elsewhere. Climate change leading to climate migration. Weather events are becoming crazy all over the world, and there's places where they're less crazy. Asheville's fortunate to be one of those places. Now more people taking refuge in the temperate mountains of western North Carolina. This real estate broker is saying he's hearing that climate is a big reason why people are moving here. I think people have noticed and are moving here for to escape wildfires, to escape floods, to escape hurricanes, to escape droughts. Scott Schuford is a local expert in community planning and resilience. Well, our big three issues of climate change affecting North Carolina are sea level rise, which clearly we're not having a problem with that, um, but also uh, heavy precipitation and periods of drought. He says those don't affect us in Asheville as much since we're far from the coast, have the North Fork Reservoir for our water supply, and the elevation to keep our temperatures mild. Not immune to climate change, of course, just less susceptible. And he doesn't think we're anywhere near the peak of climate migration. Bro, a random Kenyan farmer has been noticing that his goats are walking further and further for water year over year. And he understands this is a direct result of climate change. How do the hogs not understand this? I think it's understandable for most people to not recognize this because we don't have a direct relationship with the nature. We don't have a direct relationship with the meat that we are consuming. We do not have that direct relationship with nature at all by design. So, of course, people don't notice these differences year over year and um as i explained already there's a multi-billion dollar initiative to also make people dumber and dumber and refuse to reckon with the reality because the reality harms capital interest the reality harms the bottom line of o the oil and gas industry the entire world runs on fossil fuels like things that you would previously consider insane that uh you know your fellow americans would believe are now becoming more and more commonplace do you not notice that if you do notice that do you not see that as a major problem? Because I certainly do. I find it damaging the public discourse in general. I find it terrifying that more and more people are just like desperately clinging on to whatever kind of misinformation they can because of our uh, abject powerlessness in the face of these systems that are turning out these results, no matter what you say and do, you know. Uh, where will we go from here? Yeah, good morning to you, Robin. It's been days without power, cell phone service, or safe drinking water for so many people here in Western North Carolina. Right now, we're in historic Biltmore Village, a popular shopping and dining enclave here in Asheville, which was submerged in water. There's debris all over the place and a muddy mess left behind. This stretches for miles and miles. One official calling the damage biblical devastation. This morning, the death toll climbing after Helene barreled through the southeast. The massive storm killing more than 91 people from Florida to Virginia. In Buncombe County, North Carolina, our affiliate WSOC capturing the scope of the damage from above. At least 30 people declared dead, dozens more unaccounted for. These response teams are working around the clock to make rescues to access neighborhoods. The extreme floods washing away homes and bridges. Get out of the way. Oh, oh God. At one point, North Carolina DOT forced to close more than 400 roads, deeming them unsafe for travel. Members of the National Guard and relief teams from 19 states joining the search and rescue missions. The weather, it's weather modification conspiracies are not new. They have escaped Twitter for a very long time. I know. The problem is I think more and more people now believe it. That's the issue. It's getting way more broader play, in my opinion. 
Now, I have no data to back this up. It just feels that way, and maybe I'm wrong. But yes, they have they have existed for quite a while. But like things that were relegated to the Alex Jones like ham radio broadcast are now being publicized by like many different independent media outlets that have broad reach, reach that previously like a lot of this reach was stunted in the past. Okay, you had to like have a am radio broadcast exactly know when to tune in you had to be really invested in the conspiracy theories now you can just like accidentally reach them online on your TikTok feed. You, you can accidentally reach them and be duped by them online on your YouTube feed, on your Twitter feed, if you're on Twitter. Like it, it things that used to be uh limited to like obscure forums and, and AM radio broadcasts in the past are now broadly at the forefront of not mainstream media necessarily, but at least like the only other massive, very impactful way of, of getting information. It's just like everywhere online everywhere. In Asheville, many residents growing desperate cell service and potable water out for days. This is apocalyptic, not just for Canton, uh, but the entire region. And Canton Mayor Zepp Smathers telling ABC News it's nearly impossible to reach emergency management due to the cell service outage. To see our cell phones completely black out and not have the ability to allow people on their own accord to check on their loved ones or say, hey, look, you live near water, please leave. Hurricane Helene rapidly. Yeah, I mean, dude, dude, it's so inconsiderate when climate protesters block roads. It's just like, or it's so inconsiderate when, uh, you know, climate, I'm glad that we're like arresting the only people that are like, hey guys, you should pay attention to this because it's going to kill you one day. Western North Carolina rattled with a separate rain system just before Helene crossed the border, dumping up to 30 inches of rain in parts of the state triggering extreme and deadly flash floods and landslides. This home in Marshall swept away in this river. In Lake Lore, homes splintered and reduced to rubble. Boats and docks piling up, towns turned into lakes, submerged underwater. When you turn the corner and you see your community just full of, of buildings and trash and floating boathouses and floating homes, it just sort of takes your breath away. And it was scary. Yeah, I mean, this is. Go to been... church and you get on your knees and you pray to an Correct. invisible man in the sky. Invisible and you man don't in the think sky. That's a scam. No, I don't. You, uh, you know, and I'll tell you why. A man that was you know, built by a man. I'll tell you why it's not a scam, in my opinion. Uh -huh. All right, tide goes in, tide goes out. Never a miscommunication. You can't explain that. You can explain why the tide goes tide in. Tide goes in, yeah. tide goes out. See, the out. water, the tide comes in and it goes out, Mr. Silverman. Uh, maybe it it's always four comes in, on top of Mount Olympus out. who's making the tides go in and no, out. No, no, but you can't explain it. Can't explain it. All of you silly, woke motherfuckers are going to talk about the moon. That's not real, dumbass. It's just cheese up there. And we never went there, so shut the fuck up. Uh, everyone's talking about moon. Uh -huh. That's not real. Excuse me. <laughs> the moon. These guys think the moon is real. It's called a light bulb, okay? How else could you see at night? They turn it on at NASA every night. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Silly. It's crazy because it's like, <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> we joke, but like, that is slowly but surely becoming the normal position, man. That's becoming the normal position. I spoke with, for a couple hours with leaders yesterday affected by this hurricane. And uh, Governor Kemp of Georgia, Governor Cooper of North Carolina, county officials in the Big Bend region of Florida, and other leaders in South Carolina and Tennessee, about the broad and devastating impacts of Hurricane Helene. It's not just a catastrophic storm, it's a historic history-making storm. The entire Southeast and Appalachia. Damage from the hurricane stretches across at least 10 states. Winds over 120 miles an hour in some places. Storm surges up to 15 feet and record flooding. Communities are devastated. Loved ones waiting, not sure if their loved ones are okay, and they can't contact them because there's no cell phone connections. Many more folks displaced with no idea when they'll be able to be returned to their home, if ever, if there's a home to return to. So keeping our, we're keeping them all in our prayers and all the lives lost, and <clears throat> those particularly Listen, Jack, we're going to give uh, another $11 billion to Israel. If you 
think that that's probable and take it up with the uh, hubbub all right look alive <laughs> a lot of people talked about the fema budget shortfall well to me i say that's where the anti-semitism breeds <laughs> unaccounted for there's nothing like wondering is my husband wife son daughter mother father alive and many more who remain without electricity water food and communications <clears throat> yeah, bro. Look, didn't realize how many folks have no idea where Asheville and these other underwater towns are. I'm in Raleigh, two hours inland. Asheville is four hours west of me, up in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It was unthinkable that a hurricane could wipe out towns this far inland and high up. That's nutty, man. From Stinky, our resident meteorology chatter. Water in the Gulf has been exceptionally warm, two to four degrees Fahrenheit above normal. There have been eight category four or five hurricanes to make landfall in USO in the past eight years. This is as many as the past 57 years of record. Sea levels in Florida is eight inches higher than it was in 1950. This means higher storm surges. Thank you, Stinky19, for the information. My response to that is I don't believe you, okay? Um, guess what, dude? dinosaurs i think i don't know uh depending on the conversation that we're having i won't even believe that they were alive they were alive six thousand years ago alongside jesus christ our lord and savior don't worry about it god will sort it out is also such a like devastatingly it's a it's a devastatingly tragic tragic comedy almost the irony in that statement because um you know god is sorting it out it's just killing people then all right ggs i guess homes and businesses have washed away in an instant i want them to know we're not leaving until the job is done. I also want you to know, I'm committed to traveling to the impacted areas as soon as possible, but I've been told that it would be disruptive if I did it right now. We will not do that at the risk of diverting or delaying any, any of the response assets needed to deal with this crisis. My first responsibility is to get all the help needed to those impacted areas. And <clears throat> I expect to be there, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cold. I expect to be there later this week. I and my team are in constant contact with the governors, mayors, and local leaders. The head of FEMA, Deanne Griswell, is on the ground now in North, North Carolina. She's going to stay in Asheville and Appalachia region for the foreseeable future. There's been reports of over 100 dead and consequence of this storm, and there are reports of up 600, mil 600 people unaccounted for because they can't be contacted. Here it is. Do you have any words for the victims? We've given everything that we have. Yes, it's tragic. As a matter of fact, we're trying to get the exact number. My FEMA advisor is on the ground in Florida right now. There's a distinction between the numbers that FEMA's use and the ones that are used by, uh, by the locals. So it's, uh, it really is amazing. You saw the photographs. It's stunning. It's unbelievable. It really is. So many, so, such a wide area. Uh, and we've, we've given them all of the, all, everything that we have. We're on the ground ahead of time, so we're working hard. Thank Are there you. any more resources the federal government could be giving them? No, we've given them, we have pre-planned a significant amount of it, even though they didn't ask for it yet. Had, hadn't asked for it yet. Anyway, um, do you think he stepped down because he actually has a terminal illness? No, dude, I don't think so. I think he stepped down because he saw the poll numbers.